Okay, so chapter five, we are going to start learning about stereochemistry. The first thing we really have to do is be able to identify stereocenters, okay? But before I do that, I just want to kind of uh, explain uh, what this chapter is really about. And, and I just want to draw two molecules for you. So these are isomers, right? So what I'm drawing here is 2-butanol. And I'm tra drawing two different molecules that are, in fact, not identical compounds, all right? So I have an OH on carbon 2 in both of these, all right? But it turns out that these molecules are not identical. They're different. The molecule on the top, right, has an OH coming towards us, right, which means that there is an H going away from us attached to that red carbon. The molecule at the bottom has an OH going away from us, which means the H is pointing towards us. So these molecules are in fact different from each other. They're not identical. And we'll see a little later that these are called enantiomers, right? And that they have some different properties. Even though they're very similar, they have similar properties, but some properties and react reactions are a little different, all right? So before we can kind of get into learning how to name these and understand all the properties associated with them, the first thing we have to do is be able to just identify where we have a stereocenter, all right? So a stereocenter is a carbon atom that has four different attachments, okay? That difference can be anything except a conformational change, Right, so an n-propyl group and an isopropyl group are different attachments. All right, so all we're looking for are sp3 hybridized carbons, right? Sp3 hybridized carbons with four different attachments. All right. Now it turns out stereocenters don't just have to be carbon. Stereocenters could be phosphorus, some in certain cases nitrogen, silicon, there's lots of atoms that can be. And you can even have a stereocenter on sp hybridized carbon, right? But those are really advanced topics. So for us to just get a basic understanding, we're really only gonna be talking about sp3 hybridized carbons, all right? That will be our focus with four different attachments, okay? So let's look at an, a, a few examples here. So if we look at this carbon atom here in red, that is a stereocenter because it's four different attachments. That carbon in red is attached to a methyl group, group a chlorine, a three-carbon chain like an isopropyl attached in the middle, and then a three-carbon chain attached at the end. So those are four different attachments. That means that that is a stereocenter. This carbon here is not a stereocenter because that is attached to a chlorine and a methyl, but then it's attached to a three carbon chain on the left and a three carbon chain on the right. Okay, because these are exactly the same thing, that means that is not a stereocenter. All right. That difference can be anything, any, any difference we have. So let's draw a molecule out here like this, and then I will add a chlorine here. And let's just see how many stereocenters we have, right? And it's pretty easy when we start through. If we look at this carbon here, this is a carbon, it's attached to three hydrogens, right? Well, you've got three hydrogens, so that's not a stereocenter. I look at that carbon that's attached to two hydrogens. Those are exactly the same. Again, not a stereocenter. So we really don't have any stereocenters. No, not a stereocenter, not a stereocenter, no. These are sp2 carbons. They can't be stereocenters. It has to be sp3. So here's our only possible choice here, that carbon in red, right? So that carbon in red is attached to a chlorine. It's attached to a hydrogen. It's attached to a three carbon chain on the left and then a three carbon chain on the right. But we notice the three carbon chain on the right has an alkene, a double bond, where the one on the left does not. Therefore, this is a stereocenter because it's four different attachments. 
All right, so that stereo center can be any difference. And we have to look at the entire piece that's attached, right? I like to do an example of a really, really long molecule. So if I take a carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's put on an OH here, and we'll say a methyl group, right? So right now, as this is drawn, this is not a stereo center because this carbon here is attached to an OH and a methyl, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbons on the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbons on the left. So right now, that's not a stereo center. But if I just add one other thing, if I do anything else, let's say I change this and this now has a chlorine, well, that means that this chain on the right is different from that chain on the, right, on the left. So now that is a stereo center, right? And if you've noticed, I've also made another stereo center here. That's also a stereo center because that carbon's connected to an ethyl this long chain on the left, a chlorine, and an H that's not drawn in, right? We always, just, we always know carbon makes four bonds and we have those H's, all right? So it's pretty simple. You just look for an sp3 hybridized carbon with four different attachments, all right? So let's look at uh, example uh, one here, letter A. Do we have any stereo centers, right? This is a carbon with three H's, not a stereo center. A carbon with two H's, not a stereo center. And then this carbon here, yes, that is a stereo center because you have four different attachments. OH, H, ethyl, methyl. So we have one stereo center in, for problem A. What about problem B? No, not a stereo center. No, not a stereo center. Yes, this is a stereo center that's attached to an OH, an ethyl, an isopropyl, and an H. So that is one stereo center. And this carbon here is also not a stereo center, right? Let me just erase this. So we said, yes, here, this is not a stereo center. Why is that? Because that carbon is attached to a methyl and a methyl. These are exactly the same thing, so that carbon is not a stereo center. All right? So in the handout that was posted, I think, in, in the page above this, you can see there's a, um, a bunch of exercises for you to try, right? And the answers to everything in here can be really found on, uh, in problem set three. Problem set three has the answers to all of these exercises.